So here I'm showing you an ivory face, and this is found with a number of uh, copper alloyed pendants that represent both human and animal heads. And it's referred to as a mask, but it really is not. It's not the sort of mask that you put over your face and you have some other kind of persona to dance in a masquerade like we've been looking at the semester. Um, but we do have uh, forms of a masquerade in the Benin city um, and face concealing mask is danced uh, at only one masquerade. Uh, they appear as part of the new yam harvest, the first fruits, uh, first fruit festival. And the idea of masquerade was initiated by the o Oba in 1735 to represent the commemoration of the founding member of this new line. So remember the Benin, if you watch the video that I asked you to watch in the very first part of this uh, chapter, explains that the Benin are a subsect of the uh, Ifi. So let's move to the next one. So this is actually, I could go through this very quickly. So this is supposed to be a queen mother and it's a waist pendant. It's made out of ivory. Um, we have the, looks like um, this uh, mudfish again design here. We've gone through the significance of that. Uh, we have the coral again, that's represented here in the headdress. So um, our typical things that we've been seeing uh, that are symbolic to the Benin, but um, here it's done in ivory and it's you know, really quite beautiful. So we have um, the earliest art yet discovered in lower, the Lower Niger region. Um, the earliest art yet discovered in the lower Niger region comes from an archaeological site in the heart of, of Igbo territory. And that's what I'm showing you here. So this is really kind of interesting. They, when the person died, they would have them sitting in a chair and they would create this chamber. And there were there, all these different symbolic things. So you have uh, ivory tusk here that one foot would be on. The other foot is raised on this disc. We have a carved ivory tusk next to him. We There was a mask, a brass mask that was worn, probably also with eagle feathers that's drawn here. Um, when they found it, of course, there's no eagle feather, feathers with it. But we um, then what they would do is they're going to, they would bury him in this chamber with other relics um, that were thought to be sacred. One small casting found with the burial implies both travel and trade. Depicting an equestrian figure, it serves as either a fly whisk handle or a staff finial. Horses even today are prestigious animals associated with leaders. The rider's face in this depiction here is displayed with star scarification patterns called itchy. And it probably represents an early Igbo leader. Next, I'm showing you uh, image here. And one thing we really wanna focus on is the cloth that these men are wearing. So in Igbo to the east towards the Cross River, there exists a different form of tidal society called Ikba. And it means, the word means leopard and graded men's leopard societies are found among several Igbo and other ethnic groups living near the Cross River. In earlier times, they consisted uh, of the government and their communities. Nearly all freeborn men in the re region joined Igbas. Um, 
grade and status level of Ikba are marked by art objects in various sorts of prestige. Among Ikba's most distinctive thing is this cloth that they're wearing. It's uh, this insignia is uh, indigo and white um, on this cloth worn here that I'm showing you by a procession of ranked members. So it um, helps this cloth, the designs of the patterns are indication of the social rank of these people within the society. So these um, cloths are actually called yukare and yukare are designed by male ikbe members and then sewn and dyed by women whose remarkable, precise, and detailed work embraces representational motifs. And as I said, they're really secretive. Um, most are unable to be understood by non-members, non-Ikbas members. Uh, dresses for both men and women also include cursive indigo patterns called yuli, which are painted on visible visible body parts. So these are called uh, yulis. Um, and then we have the buildings. So the buildings are painted by groups of women and each woman will take like one of these squares and paint it. And there are certain motifs that are usually seen in these, like these are lizards here, and pythons are another, coiled pythons are another one that are often seen. Um, and then the entire surface is unified by the rhythmically repetition uh, of colors and uniform speckling of major large surfaces. By the 1980s and 1990s, however, both walls and body paints were deemed old-fashioned and were largely abandoned. In the cyclical nature of things, however, Yuli was revived, but mainly by male artists and not on bodies or walls. <laughs>